Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. All right, let's get started. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New Right Network tonight. Your host, Brian Smith. A very special guest on today. It will be really exciting. This is the New Right Network tonight. Uh, we're wrapping up all the, uh, the breaking news of the day, exposing the fake news and giving you the real news. And um, just like any other day, uh, it's amazing that uh, I, I do show prep and I get ready and, and I know what's going on. And, and a lot of stuff went down over the weekend. A lot of stuff was breaking on Friday that we missed that now it's just come up. And then all of a sudden we get this uh, uh, Notre Dame fire, uh, the, the cathedral, Notre Dame Cathedral in France. Uh, 859 years old, and now uh, it's made it through all kinds of world World War One, World War Two, the Crusades. It's made it through everything, and 859 years later, all of a sudden there's a there's a fire. That's it. Um, pretty much gutted the inside. They saved the two towers and the main structure, so there's certainly going to be a big rebuild. A lot of speculation, folks. Don't get into it. Don't get wrapped up into it. I know uh, Pamela Geller wrote an article already and insinuated a couple of different things. Uh, it, it's very possible there's been a lot of churches that have been set on fire and defamed and defaced over the, the length of time. Uh, at least in the past couple of weeks, it happens. It's almost one every two days. And um, Islam's involved. you got the Yellow Vest that are protesting. I think they're in the 22nd week of protesting. They're not protesting about jobs or taxes. They're protesting about the, the invasion and takeover of their country. And my heart goes out to you folks out there in France. I, I, there's, if we can't fix it here in America and England can't fix it, uh, yeah, I just pray for you. But anyway, let's get on, let's get on getting on with the show. And, uh, let me bring on my very special guest, John Paul. Um, real quick, uh, let me play. Let me play the clip on your YouTube channel. Uh, there's a video on his YouTube channel or his uh, Twitter Twitter handle, and this will give you a little bit of insight about John Paul with Grand Opportunity USA. And let's, let's make that big screen. All right. The political environment in our country today. People on all sides of the political spectrum are driving to the extremes. The progressive Democrat Party will brand you a racist and a bigot if you don't support their failed big government agenda and their socialist open border policies. You may also think that you could never support Republicans who you think are only out for big business and the rich to the detriment of minorities, women, and the environment. But what if there were a movement that does speak for you, a movement of opportunity that speaks to common sense principles of things like limited government, education, jobs, and safer communities while staunchly defending the rights of everyone, including minorities and LBGTQs. Now there is Grand Opportunity USA. We stand for economic opportunity, personal opportunity, social opportunity, and national opportunity. It truly is the movement for all of us. There's much more to come. Please make sure you follow us online, in social media, and in the news. All right. So welcome aboard. John Paul, let me pull, you, let me pull your video up here. Okay, so give us a heads up and a rundown of what's been going on. Well, thanks for having me. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, for a rally called the Get Right Rally, um, and we are we are premiering and promoting our new uh, hashtag Conservative Proud movement here. Um, we're at Go USA. Briefly, we're a national organization. We're based in the mo the most politically intolerant state in the country. Massachusetts. Oh, wow. I didn't realize most, Massachusetts was that bad. Yeah, most political. In fact, Suffolk County, where Boston is, is the most politically intolerant county. Oh, <laughs> we go from a place that was started by. Do you think one person on the, in Concord and in, in Concord or Lexington was a liberal? No, no, not at all. Oh, of course not. Yeah, we started the whole thing, and look where we're at. So we have some work to do to make uh, New England red, white, and blue again. It's not red again. We call conservatism red white and blue um we're going to own that conservatism and americanism are the same thing and we're going to make that clear with this conservative proud movement so anyway so we're doing that we're reaching uh our, our one of you know our goal is to kind of rebrand remessage and reboot the entire image and brand really of conservatism um to be much more you know much more attractive we're right there wrong we've got a better product the left has 
is selling poison. Um, and it shouldn't be this hard. It really shouldn't be this hard to right. sell such a good product called Freedom, Liberty, Opportunity. I mean, it should be so easy. And, and yet we are having a hard time because we don't know how to message in the right. The left, the left knows how to message. Even they're selling, they're selling garbage, poison, and death. And we've got the we've got the the old school GOP, the the Rhino Republicans. A lot of that stuff, I think, is uh, really tainted the waters, as well as right. um, something. Uh, Paul Joseph Walton says, "We are the counterculture now. We we are the counterculture. We're we're the cool kids to come hang out with." <laughs> well, we're. That's the truth in our minds, right? But the reality is still uh, just I just did the, the, the latest data is, is, is uh, you know, millennials are voting supported in midterms more than two to one for Democrats. Now, they're, 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 they're signing a suicide pact for their future by doing that, but they don't know that yet. So our, what we have to do is make it a but really clear. And it's not that hard, actually, to, to make it clear that, that the benefits of conservatism. So there's that, but there's also a thing that I think is important that, that, you know, it's funny because Brandon Straka has started the walkway movement, a gay, you know, conservative was a liberal, um, great, great movement. He's got to walk away from the, the, the awful evil Democrat party. Uh, but where do you walk to? Well, we say, let's right. walk, 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 walk toward opportunity. And there's still a situation where if you call yourself a conservative, you are worried about being blackballed, fired, uh, maybe beat up, uh, being disowned, you know, well, we have you know, Candace being made of all, I don't know. I mean, right. people just feel like it's a can't and we have to stop that. So that's what conservative crowd is. Enough is enough. Come out of the damn conservative closet and be proud and don't be hiding. Don't be ashamed because if we do it, we, you know, half the country is conservative. We'll, we'll walk shoulder to shoulder and no one's going to mess with us. Right. And, and even Candace Owens, she did an interview with a, a gay conservative and, and they talked oh. about how it was more difficult coming out of the closet as being a conservative than coming out as being gay. I took that as tongue in cheek for a while, but I just saw another clip again and apparently it's true. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm conservative and I'm gay and I know how hard it was to come out of the gay closet. It was really hard. I'm Catholic and conservative. Right. And actually, the only hate I got was from the left when I turned into a when I when I started, you know, being open about being conservative. I didn't get hate from anybody that I can remember, anybody in my family. I didn't get rejected from any, any of my friends when I came out about, you know, maybe 15 years ago. Um, not quite yet, yeah, about 15 years ago. Um, but I've had at least 50 percent of my gay friends, you know, hundreds of just nothing to do with me because because I voted for Trump and I'm conservative. Um, and so the intolerance on the left is unbelievably um, unbelievable. And why? And it's crazy. It's like I'm in a whole mirrors. I'm in an upside down world. We're the ones that are worried about uh, being out when the left, I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves. Yes. They should be ashamed yes. of anybody that supports the left. Socialism, communism, authoritarianism, big taxes. Planned um, Parenthood. Hating Christians, hating white men. They, they should be ashamed. If anybody should be afraid, they should be afraid. Yeah, we're the ones. It's backwards. It's it's so bizarre. It makes no sense. So we have to change that. And that's why I think the conservative proud movement will hopefully get people to say enough is enough. I mean, we're the real Americans. The left, they shouldn't even, I wouldn't even want to even call them Americans. I mean, I know technically they're Americans, but right. I have a hard time accepting them. You know, when, when you look how bad they become, and how uh, anti-American they're, they, 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 the policies they're pushing are. Some young folks are uh, taking the... I, I, I'm gonna coin it. It hasn't been coined yet. Taking the uh, the make a, the MAGA hat challenge. A lot of these kids are putting the MAGA hat on on purposely, uh, setting their phone on record, getting ready to record, and walking down the street waiting for something to happen on purpose. Which I, 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 I good good for you. Just be careful out there, guys. Uh, but but back to your point about um, being gay and, and being conservative. Um, I lived out in Long Beach, California for 10 years, and uh, I, I mean, I, I couldn't help it. I mean, almost all my friends, majority of my friends, the gay or t- turn of lifestyle or whatever, when they knew how conservative I was, uh, I think Reagan came up one time amongst a, a conversation, and that was it. A couple of them, I'm just screaming and yelling. I mean, it might have been drinking, but then I just, just really violent about uh, – Supporting Reagan. This was back in the early early two thousands. Um, and then the other thing, the same one, same guy, uh, just would hate on me for being straight and say, "How could you possibly?" And I'm like, hey, "Dude, calm down. You're yeah, the last person that's be- creating and creating. Uh, you know, <laughs> where do they think they came from? I, unless they're test tube babies, you know what? They came from straight people. It's just 
it's so bizarre. It's it's like it, it's it's in another universe. I, I was actually talking about it today, and I said um, they're having a panel discussion here in, in Atlanta at the College of Atlanta College Republicans. They're doing it called the Great Debate. Um, I think they're going to have like you know five or six Republicans, the the young Republicans versus the uh, College Democrats or something like that. And you know what I would say in that situation if I was in that panel, I'd say, "Why am I here?" <laughs> Wait a minute. The Cold War was won. We have unca- like data up. I don't know how much data we have proving and showing that the billion people lifted out of, lifted out of poverty in a twenty year period thanks to free markets and capitalism. And one and a half, one and a half, one hundred and fifty million people at least were murdered by socialism in the last century. Some are that's saying over two. Statistic. Yeah, some are saying that's over two hundred thousand. That's the statistic you need, but I can point yeah. to a hundred other statistics. And then we won the Cold War, and then the were, people were freed, and people were born out of poverty and levels that un, un, unbelievable how much in China and all over the all over the world from free markets. And we're having this conversation. Like, why are we debating? Like the world. Okay, the world's not the world's not flat. No. And no. No. so it sucks. Like, well, yeah. why are we even here? I just don't get it. It's no, just like, I know. Why uh, are we talking about this? Uh, the, the <laughs> Department of it? Miseducation. The Department of Miseducation. Uh, yeah. The big governments that want the uh, the people to believe that they desperately need them. Uh, because if we didn't need them, then maybe they wouldn't have their job. But we can look back and, and not far into history either. Go back exactly 20 years to 1999. And Hugo Chavez, and look at that regime and the destruction, the the, the death, and the, the they're running out of water and no food. At one point in time, dogs were roaming because they couldn't feed their dogs, and all of a sudden, all the dogs disappeared because everybody ate the dogs. And now, now yeah. they got problems with diseases and things like that from not having even clean drinking water anymore. That's right. And they and they and what people don't say is, first of all, everyone they all think that they no one's tried it right, so. There's no one's done socialism right yet. So after a hundred plus tries <laughs> and hundreds of millions dead, right? Right. They have tried a hundred times plus in a row and the body counts enough to probably go to the moon back and forth 20 times. But no, someone else, uh, you know, AOC is going to do it right, right, right. <laughs> and then that's the second thing. First of all, you know, a, a bartender is going to figure it out. A 29 year old uh, loud mouth bartender. Sure. And the second thing is, that everything that he said back then, I don't know if the viewers know, he called it democratic socialism. He called it a compassionate conservatism. He said, we're not going to um, – compassionate uh, socialism. And he said, oh, we're not going to take private industry away. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. But he did stuff for the Supreme Court just like the left is talking about. He is talking about social justice and compassionate socialism just like Chavez talked about. And look what happened. It's the exact same things that are being said, but gullible, stupid, uneducated, and – just brainwashed kids and not just kids, but people of all different backgrounds, get my, my gay friends, all they just, they're not listening to facts. They're just, they're, the blinders are on. And that's why we have to break through that because the facts are so clear. This shouldn't be this hard. I mean, it's laughable. It shouldn't be this hard to sell such a great product when the left is selling such evil poison and death. And yet right. we have to have this argument. <laughs> Has, hashtag tax day, everybody. Uh, I, I listened to a little bit of a uh, Rush Limbaugh show today, and there was all kinds of people calling in with just incredible stories. Uh, I, I've told my story before. I, I have never – this was the least amount of money I've made in one year and probably about a decade, and it was my best return back because I have three children, so I got double the return on those children. And it was like, well, finally, finally I'm one of those people that can, I can get my money back. I can get my yeah. money back. Um, you know, my, my student loan interest, I'm, I'm able to write that off and then the home and just all these really incredible things. It just feels good knowing that you've got somebody up there fighting for you. And what, what's it been uh, since mid 2017? Every outlet is going to wreck the economy. It's going to, it's going to tank. Nobody's going to get returns back. Even today, New York Times wrote an article said, uh, you may have gotten more back. But the majority of people don't still don't believe it. <laughs> like, kind of, come on, man. Yeah, because they're just they're just they're hearing the poison from the mainstream media, which I don't know. That's basically, you know, the old Soviet Union had what Pravda. Right. It's all it is. It's just it's just the the you know the the George the the, the George Soros backed globalist Democrat Party. I mean, I call them. I don't even want to call them. I don't. So there's a few things I want to say. Is one thing I'd say is its terminology is very important. Yes. Um, 
I don't know if you knew that the um, using the right words is important. The left gets that because they're selling poison. It makes sense because if you're selling garbage, you have to be really good at marketing. <laughs> right? Well, that and I you say this too. You know, we you thought have- we could hang out because it was self-evident. So I think you know, people on the right were like, ah. Oh, why do we have to worry about marketing and branding? It's like it's it's self evident, right? Now you we need to exponentially worry about it. more money. Done such a good job, right? Take right. Our institutions, right? And I, I've said this many times before: the Democrats need exponentially more money to win elections because they yeah, need they're selling garbage, right? Because they're selling the garbage, they're selling a narrative that doesn't work, and they've got to spend more to actually get that to sink in. I I think our branding on the GOP, the old school GOP, I don't think it was very good. And I complained about it a lot, but mm-hmm. but but you see Donald Trump going out there uh, slaying the dragon every day, calling it what it is. Um, you know, love the fact that he is. This is the first time I've ever known him in my lifetime, other than Obama, that the president of the United States is in direct contact with his base on a minute to minute, hour to hour basis. Never happened before in the history of ever. No, no. And it's incredible because they wouldn't care about because every other president, they, they're all no one really was really cared about the people like President Trump, not in recent history. Right. You know, and so he's doing it. It's driving the liberals, it's driving the left crazy. In fact, I don't like using the word liberal because, by the way, I want to take that word back. That was ours, by the yes, way. We want it back. Yes. Liberal, classic liberal was our world yes. word. And we want that word back. Yep. Thank you. So we're. I'm, I'm actually only saying pre- regressive, not pro- progressive. And I don't even like attacking liberals because really we're the classic liberals. I want that word back. It's ours. You know, that's <laughs> so funny. We're going to get that word back. Plus we're going to get New England back. We're going to get a lot back. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny you bring that up. Uh, I was just, just before I had dinner with my daughters tonight, they were taking this uh, online quiz to find out what kind of superhero you are. And they still asking all these crazy questions. And, and there was one set of questions that said, are you conservative? libertarian or liberal and my one daughter she I'm, I'm i'm trying to teach him there's a lot of a lot of words out there and there's big words and my one daughter said oh no liberal and libertarian that's the same that's it just it doesn't mean just go conservative that's it just conservative i said whoa, whoa. okay girls all right that's fine going conservative but let me explain to you libertarian so even them even them and you like we're saying right here the mixing yeah. of the words You've got a 10-year-old that's really smart and says, yeah. no, 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 we're conservative, we're not liberal, and libertarian, it's probably the same. We've got to take those words back. Yeah, we've got to take those words back, and it does matter. It's just One good example is when, uh, the, you know what the death tax, liberty tax, I mean the death tax versus the state tax story is? We talk about that? So one thing that your viewers may want, want if they haven't heard the story before – Back, I don't know, 15 years ago, they, uh, we were, the, the, there was a bill on the floor calling, and we were calling for a massive tax for estate tax. When you're dead, right, the right. government takes half your property, right? When it was called the estate tax, 80% of the public was for it because they think of, okay, these rich people in big estates, yes, yeah, screw them. They're, 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 they're worth so much money. <laughs> take their money. Yeah, they don't need all that money, right? But then it turned out that it wasn't just estate tax. It wasn't just for rich billionaires with estates. It was just what it was called. So they called it the death tax. The minute they changed the death tax, it went from 80% support to 80% against. Right. Just changing the word. So you imagine if we take – if we stop calling the left liberals because I don't – they don't they don't deserve that word actually. No. So – and progressive, they certainly don't deserve that word. So you call them regressives. And I don't – the word socialism actually is not scaring people anymore. So I like calling it dictator economics. Well, and that would be an absolutely good word for and it. If we started calling it dictator economics – and then we called free economics, free market economics versus dictator economics. You know what? 90% of the country, how many people would be for dictator economics? Really? <laughs> but with the left, they want to be dictators. That's what it is. So we call it what it is. We start changing words. If we got every Republican and every conservative to start saying those words, we would win a lot more elections. No, you're because right. And it wouldn't be hard. Have freedom or, or tyranny, you know, dictator economics or free market economics. It would be an easy choice. So we have to start using these words and use better phrasing and better messaging. Then we can start winning the argument much easier. And it wouldn't be hard to point to it either, folks. Uh, you know, government-run health care, they want to dictate to you what you can and cannot do. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, Private property, they want to dictate to you what you can and cannot do. If you own an uh, apartment complex, they want to dictate to you what you can and cannot do. And out on the West Coast, they are absolutely in full meltdown when it comes to property value, uh, when, it, when it comes to rental property. It is unbelievable how they want to dictate 
every single thing to you. And now we've got uh, Gavin Newsom turning out to be worse than, than they could even possibly imagine, trying to put a tax on water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're crazy. <laughs> They're, they're doing everything they can because they know that even Crazy Share, you hear what Crazy Share said yesterday? Oh, right, yeah. Today? I mean, Crazy Share, the most Trump hating, you know, she's she's the A list of the uh, nut jobs right now right. in Hollywood. Trump hating, you know, Trump, Trump derangement syndrome. And she's saying, we can't handle any more people in LA. We have all of these millions of people we can't feed, we can't take care of. I'm like, there's a light one off in that dim bulb, <laughs> you know? That dim bulb of chair, you know, it's like, even she's starting to wake up. Now that Trump had a brilliant move saying we're going to ship them to your city, all of a sudden sanctuary cities are now like, oh, wait, we want we want all the illegal immigrants who want their votes, but we don't want them in our backyard. Right. And now all of a sudden we're finding out over, over the weekend, if you didn't hear uh, Trump uh, bemoaning, if you will, on Twitter saying, I'm going to ship y'all to the sanctuary cities, sanctuary states, be done with it. And apparently uh, DHS and some legal minds have said that he's has the legal right to do that. Now you've got all, and it's unbelievable. I was talking with my wife about this. Look at how every one of these liberal talking heads, whether it be Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Bechair, any left-wing nut that, that uh, has the Trump derangement syndrome, it didn't even get it. Didn't get that Trump was playing with them. And so they went full bore, just all out. And now you've got Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying, no, no, he's He's serious. We're going to do, just double down on it, and it's just melting their minds down. Uh, again, well, I, yeah, they, and, they, and they've been doing it. Um, they've been st- when Obama's around, he was he was placing Somali immigrants by the thousands, and and they purposely planted putting in red districts to turn them blue. So he's been personal. They've been and they were wrecking towns, overfilling with, 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 with people they could not take, and they've been doing that for 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 years, for, for decades. So now we're giving you a little of their own medicine, and they're having a heart attack. Right. But they don't want illegal immigrants, and they actually call it dumping. Yeah. They call it immigrant dumping. So all of a sudden, it's dumping. They were these people are better than Americans. If you listen to the left, right? They're better. They're, these people coming illegally to our country are better than any Americans that are here now. But now it's called dumping. I think garbage gets dumped. I don't know, I think people get dumped. So they he just exposed them for the with the, for the for the rats they are. You know, they just they're just. And it's, at the end of the day, they want power and they want to control and they want to dictate. And true conservatives want to serve. Right. Um, they want to serve people, not dictate. And so it's the opposite. It's a really very, very opposite dynamic of what a conservative does to serve people in, in, in position of government, a true conservative, where the left, they want to dictate, they want to control, and they want to wipe out our Constitution, stuff courts, and you have permanent control, and they're just completely out of control. So we have to win this, uh, win this, uh, you know, this, this, this cultural battle because we're not going to have a country left with those nut jobs. No, uh, you're 100 correct. 2024 is around the corner. 2020 is around the corner. 2024 is really close. We've got to have our game plan in play. We've got to be ready for the handoff. And right. um, as you said, you know, Dearborn, Michigan. I, I rant and rave about it all the time. Um, I know some people have a problem with uh, Dennis Michael Lynch, but but whatever. He went to Dearborn, Michigan. He made a documentary. He was on the streets. He showed it. He exposed it. Uh, facts are facts, and now we've got Omar's district up there in Minnesota. Just, I think it was twenty thousand uh, uh, Somali refugees dumped in the entire district, all huddled together. Um, you've got different districts that that have a lot of Somalis and got violent problems with some of the young teenagers versus non-Muslims, and it's it's when you take a culture, it's different than another culture. I say one culture is better than the other. But if you take two cultures that are completely different and overnight you dump them on top of each other, that's a recipe for disaster. That's that's a powder keg ready to go off. Well, yeah, there's a couple things. First of all, throughout American immigration history, there's been a metered response, a carefully metered uh, plan to, to take in uh, immigrants. And it's a proven fact that you have to take in immigrants at a certain pace that you can absorb them. And they can assimilate and right. become part of your culture. Um, that's first of all. That's that's true of every culture and every group of people we've taken in our country. It's just a normal thing. It's normal. To, it's just the way it works in reality. But then you add the fact that political Islam to separate it from any religious aspect. I call. I think we have to look at political Islam or Sharia Islam as a very different thing because that's got a political agenda, which is specifically um, 
eventually eliminating every government on earth that's not Islamic and replacing it with Islamic. Right. And that's something that's just that's not bigoted. That's not Islamophobic. That is in Sharia law. That is codified. You ask, yeah, you and ask that, them and they'll the tell you that's what Islam. they want. Yeah. yeah, in Catholic law, there's nothing in Catholic law that says your job is to go into your 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 host these countries and eliminate the uh, eliminate the government, replace it with Catholic canon law. Right. That does never that's never existed. Jesus said, well, "Give Caesar what Caesar, give God what's God's." It's not a political movement, but Islam, the Islam, the, the, the political part of it has to be treated like politics right. and separated from the religious aspect. And when you look at it from that perspective. It's completely unacceptable to have people with that, with, with that kind of mentality um, coming in into your culture that refuse to assimilate because they don't believe it's it, they believe it's against their religion to assimilate. You can't that, that doesn't work. You need people, you know, you need people that are come that want to assimilate, like Muslims that say Sharia law is not my guiding principle. America and the Constitution is fine, obviously. Right. Right. But when you have people that are coming in a bank, a, 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 a kneeling to Sharia law and making that their you know that that's clearly their, their their driving agenda. They're never going to assimilate, and that's what Omar is. She is she is basically ISIS in the in the House of Representatives. No, you're 100 percent correct. When you're beholden to a, a religion that dictates your uh, your founding uh, of the government, and that that is completely opposite of the founding of our government, th- those two are completely incompatible. It's it's water and oil. Yeah, it does. It doesn't work. And that's why I don't like even calling that religion because political Islam should not be considered religion. There's a religious aspect of it. And then there's the political aspect. It's like you take the the U.S. law and combine it with Catholic canon law and smash it all together. That wouldn't be that'd be a religion, a hybrid religion, a government mix. Right. Right, right. But that's what people understand is is when they look at it, um, Muhammad was a was a ruler, a dictator, a warlord, and you know, and a judge and a jury and a spiritual leader. He was all that together. So Americans, they don't understand that Islam is a whole mix. So you have to separate it out. Anyway, the, to your point is, I agree. There's they're coming in. They're not assimilating. They're doing they're not. They're, and and now you have these problems on your hands. And that's what Omar represents. And she is an America hater. I don't care what she says. You know, she'll she'll lie all day long about it. But she has an agenda and it's not an American agenda. And, and she's only been in office for a short while. You know, not I'm fine with Muslims. Yeah. That's not the problem. But someone that's a Sharia law, like that she follows political Islam. That's a different thing. Right. No, correct. And they've only been in office just a short while. Uh, we've got to, again, uh, with, uh, proud, be proud to be a conservative, speak up, speak out, um, learn, learn the information that you need to know to be able to speak up and speak out, uh, yeah. listen, to, listen to shows like this, get involved. Can people, how do people get involved with you? Well, there's a few things. First of all, we just launched our hashtag conservative proud video today. So if you go to at grand O USA, it's grand letter O USA, you'll find us in social media. Please watch and share our video. Okay. Our goal is to make that, to get this going viral. So people know that conservative, that there's a unified movement, that the conservative proud movement is for everybody that believes in the basic principles of liberty, government, constitution, your constitutional rights and freedoms, um, free markets, free people and opportunity for all that simple. Basic, basic, common sense principles. If you believe in those principles, then you are conservative. We want you to be part of our movement. And then we want to own the whole month of November, of, I'm sorry, of October as conservative proud month. And have October surprise. Of the days and wear red, white, and blue every day of the month <laughs> and show the, the world that we are proud. We show it. We're, we're not shy about it. And it will shake up the political environment if we actually own a month of October that's everywhere. Great. That's what that's what we want to happen. So please join our movement. You go to grandopportunityusa.org uh, org, or you go to you, you know find us in social media, follow us, like us, um, get involved. We'd love to have your support and have have people um, join the movement and co brand an event in October to make it uh, to make conservative proud a thing that. We don't own a Grand Opportunity USA. It's something that we're sharing. It's a, it's a movement we'd love to get started. Excellent. If you guys look down in the description below, uh, the, the handles there and the email addresses there, or not the email, the uh, the website addresses there. So you can check cool. all that out. Absolutely. Stay plugged in here as well. Uh, a new right network tonight, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find us at smith.tv. Uh, we'll find a way. Um, I'll ask my IT girl, my, my lady, I, I will find a way to see if we can't link something on our website to get back to you as well. Uh, we love supporting these, these, these movements. We were there for Brandon Strzok, uh, there for Laura Loomer, uh, John Paul. I, I love your name, by the way. <laughs> it reminds me of John, John Paul Jones. 
Led Zeppelin. Uh, John Paul Jones, <laughs> he said, he said, right, the only thing he wished he could give is give his life, give his life twice for his country, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only thing is he regrets he couldn't give his life twice for his country. And then the other John Paul II, oh, he was pretty much, John Paul II and Reagan pretty much ended um, the Soviet Union and, and world dominate, you know, the, uh, the communism, at least for a time. Uh, Staved it so off. Yeah. The Pope wasn't a communist, I should say. No, my, I, never, I have to say no more than that. And a Pope that wasn't a communist. Thank God, John Paul, it wasn't a communist. Oh, you ain't lying. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. Man. A whole conversation we can talk about another time. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, thank, God, thank God for that, that I'm sharing the name with a guy like that and not like, you know. The, this uh, guy we got now, I know. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. And again, we'll, we'll help My try boss. and get people thank you, plugged. Thank you. Thank you for spreading the message because it has to get out there. You know, the mainstream media is shutting us off. So what you're doing is so essential because we can't get this word out. We could never have this conversation on TV. Even Fox wouldn't allow this conversation. No. On TV. Speaking of Fox, uh, Shep Smith was interviewing a, a, a reporter from France and he cut him off. He shut him down because <laughs> he was entertaining different ideas and possibilities. He said, we're not doing that here. Cut him well, off. <laughs> Anyways, all right, yeah. John. No hey, safe message. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank God you so much. Go you, God bless. Go USA. Amen. All right. All right, everybody. Nice. Yes, yes. And so as we move right along, we got a lot of stuff we got to get to tonight. Uh, I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I did a whole lot of show prep, like I normally do. Uh, you know, early morning, I'm, I'm getting involved in show prep, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, the uh, the whole the whole uh, thing in France blew up. I got I was uh, I was upset by it. I was uh, taken taken back by it. I, I wasn't really uh, wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't see it coming. But um, I, I've got a soft heart for for antiquities if you will i really love old uh old things uh antiques it's just there's something special about it and when when isis blew up the uh the buddhist the the buddhist uh statues it just it was a heartbreaker to watch that happen i mean hundreds and hundreds of years thousands of years old and uh, isis decided or uh, might have not have been isis yet might have been um Oh, one of the one of the fractions that uh, formed to become ISIS uh, was blowing up all that other stuff. I'm not Buddhist. I don't support Buddhism. I don't I, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. But I think that's fascinating that that they would uh, human beings would craft those statues like that out of the side of a mountain. And for uh, the, these these individuals that I've got choice words for to do these things are just they're unacceptable. Just absolutely unacceptable. So again, I had that. The, I made mention about the New York Times fake news. <clears throat> this is the uh, let's see the New York Times fake news. They put up an article and says, "Face it, you probably got a tax cut." Studies consistently find that 2017 law tax cuts by Donald Trump that they don't mention by Donald Trump uh, for most Americans. Most of them don't buy it though. So they did this poll and they found that the poll, across the income groups, most Americans got a tax cut under 2017 law. According to the Independent Tax Policy Center, most of them are skeptical. I don't know where he's getting those numbers from. Uh, I don't know when. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to see. How, I don't know why. I didn't. The article was just posted uh, yesterday, but I don't know when the poll was taken. So the poll may have been taken before. Uh, people actually started getting their returns back. I'd like to see them do this poll again after tax day, after everybody's got their tax returns back. And I'd like to see what happened then because a lot of people are absolutely excited about what's going on. And um, we were talking about Omar, uh, the newest, one of the newest uh, individuals in Congress. And this is what went down over the weekend. Um, she made some really awful, awful comments uh, about 9-11 and, and really just disparaging remarks. For her to be a congresswoman and even just even go down that road, there's no reason to go down that road. Do not do this. She's from another country. She's a small in. She uh, was resettled here by Barack Obama and now picked up by the Justice Democrats who decided to find 
actors and actresses to run and put him in the in the Congress and flood the Congress with radical left wing uh, uh, politicians. And you're like, Brian, well, why would anybody vote for them? They're voting for them in Democrat blocks only, and they're running them against old school Democrats who have been gaslighting their people for decades about saying that we're going to do this, we're going to do this, hope and change, hope and change, hope and change. And what happens? Nothing. Nothing changes. They get rich. We still get poor. So we, conservatives, we're angry. Us libertarians, we're angry. And these young justice Democrats are angry too, but for different reasons. They're angry that their base or, or their they're voting the, the ones they vote for, their leaders. They're angry that their leaders aren't delivering on promises. We're angry that uh, these leaders are lying to them and gaslighting them. So now they've found a way to flood the, flood the zone, if you will, and get them into Congress. And this is what happened over the weekend. Donald Trump took a clip of Omar speaking. Well, I'm not sure if it was Trump, but but somebody took a clip of Omar speaking and then did the montage, put it all together. Uh, pictures and views from 9-11 for you listening only. And Donald Trump re- tweeted out this clip saying, we will never forget. And from three days ago, 256,000 likes and 10.3 million views. So check this out. Donald Trump had it pinned to his timeline. Care was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something. Now you, you see the Twin no Towers idea, as they're coming down. another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> some people did something. Oh, my goodness. There is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Some people did something. You see the second plane hit the second it tower. It flew straight into it. You see all the rubble? People covered in soot. You know where you are. September 11, 2001 happened. We all knew where we were that day. And for her to make light, some people did something. This is unacceptable. Um, I, I can't say it enough. Islamic believers, people who are believers in Islam and Sharia law and believe that that should be the law of the land, cannot be elected officials here in our country. And I'm going to go through this real quick, folks. This might seem like I'm skipping through it, but you got to understand, um, I wasn't ready for um, uh, Notre Dame uh, no, Notre Dame to happen, to catch fire like it did and uh, cause such a big ruckus. We have to touch on that. And um, this by Town Hall, Alexandria Casio cortez compares criticism of Representative Ilhan Omar to the Holocaust. Yes, you're right. She tweeted out, and this is just unbelievable. She tweeted out, first they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unions. I did not speak out because I was a trade union. On and on and on. A story of a Holocaust. uh, uh, Someone who died in the Holocaust came for me because I was... Jewish, not realizing that's the way it's going to go. So she said, members of Congress had a duty to respond to the president's explicit attacks today against Ilhan Omar. Her life is in danger for our colleagues to be silent, is to be complicit in the outright dangerous targeting of the members of Congress. Nobody's targeting anybody. We're calling it out. We're calling out for what it is. You're wrong. For you to say those things are wrong. And you don't like being called out. So both of these individuals, Omar and uh, Casey Cortez and Rashid Talib, all of them came from the Social Democrats. They were all uh, interviewed and actresses, and they were ran uh, far, far left radicals. And the Democrat Party is in total tailspin. They're having issues, and Nancy Pelosi is finding it impossible to rein them in. And this is this is on the right, folks. Be be happy, be feel good that these are the great minds on the right. And this 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 kid is such an up and coming, just a really incredible, intelligent young man. Uh, 
at the CJ Pearson. I'll put that up the screen at the CJ Pearson. And here's what he says about this. I'm CJ Pearson. We already knew that Congresswoman Alana Omar hated Jewish people, but now we know that she also likes terrorists. Kind of crazy. She was recently caught in video comparing the United States military to terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah. What's really interesting to me, though, is that Congresswoman Alan Omar fled radical Islam. Now she's defending it? She left Sudan because it was governed by people who practice the same faith in the same way that many members of Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah do. She fled to America to escape that torture, to escape that oppression. And now she comes on our soil to defend it? And worse, to compare our military to those animals? This is a woman who is not only deserving of expulsion from every committee upon which she sits in our Congress, but she is not deserving of any office in this country. Any office whatsoever. And the next time she thinks it is appropriate to defend radical Islam in this country, maybe she should go back to Sudan to remind herself of what radical Islam actually is. Because it is no friend of this country and no friend of this country's values. And that's pretty much it. Be thankful we've got such great minds like this coming up. This young uh, a black man, just strong, intelligent, uh, educated so well. i got to give his parents so much credit for that. Um, but, but something I, that, not that he's missing, but something that he didn't touch upon, the reason why these individuals are here, these Muslims, these uh, Somali Muslim refugees, the reason why they're here is because they've been commissioned from their high up and have been uh, uh, won the lottery, if you will, to then come to America, resettle, and, and help in the takeover of this country. It's, a, it's an absolute fact. Um, and this is uh, at James Woods. James Woods, just a just an incredible, awesome uh, uh, voice of reason on Twitter, and this is another clip of Ilhan Omar speaking, and he writes, "Don't listen to the pundits; judge for yourself." This is her speaking, and you just listen to her words, and you judge for yourself who you think. Ilhan Omar is. It was the, the thing that was interesting in the class was every time the, the, the professor said Al-Qaeda, he sort of like his shoulders yeah. went up and, you know. Yeah, he's in command like, here. Al-Qaeda, you know. He's an up. expert. And it, was, <laughs> and it was, you know, as What's his it, name? As, what a put his oh, name on the not, We, we what are does not he saying his name. Uh, yeah. you, you probably get to see him on on CNN. Well, yeah, of you know. course. I love those guys. But you know, but 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 it is it is that you don't say America with an yeah. intensity. You yeah. don't say England with yeah. an intensity. You yeah. know, you don't you don't say um, the army with an intensity. Qaeda. <laughs> but you say these these names because you you want that that word to carry weight. You want it to leave something with yeah, it has a cultural meaning not just exactly meaning. so it's it's you know it's, it's said with a deeper voice with so so yes it is but when a non-white commit a violence or miss okay the clip ends there but as you can see her joking and making fun of uh and and just enjoying being able to say yeah al-qaeda al-qaeda she's She's enjoying talking about Al-Qaeda as if that is her army. And maybe it is. Maybe it is. We've got to take these individuals for their word. We cannot be mincing words with them. we we got to believe them. When they say something, believe what they're saying. And don't think that they're not uh, some ulterior uh, motives or another agenda. This is Louder with Crowder. Steve Crowder, uh, Louder with Crowder on, on YouTube. Just a, He's from Canada, and I had issues with him during the race because he was down with Ted Cruz, you know, Canadians, you know, whatnot. But he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And for those of you watching the video, I guess it's wig day, and they're all wearing wigs. But, but listen to what he says when he talks about Ilhan Omar. Here's the next reason. She's actually pro-terrorist. 
And I, I don't it's mean kind statement. of sort of. She's literally proactively pro-terrorist. Yeah. Okay, she begged for she begged for compassion in ISIS sentencing. <laughs> voted oh, in okay. support of life insurance payouts for terrorists. Uh, I, if, oh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was after San Bernardino where she wanted to make sure that yes. they they still got what they get. What I get, mom, Larry, but you killed people. <laughs> the, the, yeah. vote, the vote was 127 to two. Yes, <laughs> and she was one of the. She two. was one of the two. <laughs> the other guy thought the other that there two. was an amendment on it that he didn't like, but right. The the rest of the bill was yeah. Fine. It was two who voted against, it, and the first guy said like, "Oh, hold on a second. I think this could be misconstrued." They clarified it, and he yeah. said, "Oh, okay. I was wrong about that." And she still said, "No, no, <laughs> no. yes." Oh, folks, it's not funny, but I mean, they're funny. They're they're having cutting up and having jokes about it. But but this is these are their voting records, and she's in a district right now that is going to reelect, 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 and uh, it's it's very very dangerous right now. And over the weekend or Sunday, 60 Minutes did a puff piece, as Donald Trump uh, said, did a puff piece on Nancy Pelosi. Um, you may think it's a puff piece, and it was, but it's very telling. This was tweeted out by 60 Minutes of Nancy speaking. Uh, just listen, just listen. It's so telling. Just listen to Nancy speak on her own, and it's just so telling. So you are contending with a group in Congress over here on the left flank are these self-described socialists on the right, these moderates. And you yourself said that you're the only one who can unify everybody. And the question is, can you? By and large, uh, whatever orientation they came to Congress with, they know that we have to hold the center, that we have to go down the mainstream. They know that? They do. But it doesn't look like that. It looks as if it, you're, it's fractured. She likes to minimize the conflicts within her caucus between the moderates and the progressives. You have these wings, AOC and her group on one side. Well, it's like five people. No, it's <laughs> the progressive group. It's more than well, the five. I'm a progressive, yeah. She just said that down the middle of the road, we know we got to go down the middle of the aisle. We know we got to go down that way. And, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden she said, you know, the left wingers, the ones on the progressive side. She said, oh, yeah, five of them. No, 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 the, the progressives. Oh, well, I, I'm progressive. Oh, my goodness. It was too funny, too funny. Um, at Real Daily Wire, we've now got uh, Rashida Talib. Never uh, been able to pronounce these words in the past, but uh, I've been forced to learn. Rashida Talib, part of the Ocasio Cortez and the um, um, Omar debacle, she accuses Democrat leadership of racism. Says Pelosi uses minority members as tokens of diversity. Yeah, and when you say there's fraction, it's not me. I have been saying it, but you just heard the lady on 60 Minutes interviewing Nancy Pelosi saying that your party is fractured. Folks, they are in a complete downward spiral in a civil war. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, I've got to hammer this home. We are coming together. We have a lot of new programs that are coming out. We have a lot of great minds that are coming out. We have to put on display the Democrat Party and their fracturing so that we can show people which way to go. Um, I know people are saying I'm a Donald Trump voter. I vote Donald Trump. That's not going to work in 2024. Donald Trump's not running in 2024. So when that happens, who are you going to vote for? You're going to vote re Republican? Are you going to vote Libertarian? Where, where are you going to vote? We need to focus. We need to shape this. Donald Trump has already hijacked the GOP. We had a mass exodus of the rhino Republicans and uh, the ghost of John McCain. And so now... We've got to remake the party the way that it always was and the way it should be. Uh, and this, this other one, this is crazy, man. This, this Nancy Pelosi, uh, I don't know if she understands. I think she's going through like this stage of uh, delusions of sorts or maybe even uh, Alzheimer's. But check this out. She tweeted this out herself. She tweeted this out. And I had to say this was priceless. How would you describe President Trump? How would I describe him? I think that he describes himself on a daily basis. I think that there's nobody in the country who knows better 
that he should not be president of the United States than Donald Trump. You think he knows it himself? I think he does, yeah. <laughs> How she would you describe laughing at President her. Trump? How would I describe him? I, I think that he describes himself on a daily basis. I think that there's nobody in the country who knows better that he should not be president of the United States <laughs> than Donald Trump. You think he knows it himself? I think he does, yeah. She gets angry and the, the questioner starts to smirk at her. That's, that's, that's crazy. Crazy. This is what's leading the Democrat Party in Congress. This is Speaker of the House. Uh, and, and let me just explain to you the kind of weight that, that holds. Speaker of the House, God forbid something happened to the president. God forbid something happened to the vice president. The Speaker of the House would be president of the United States of America. Let that sink in for just one minute. Let that sink in. And this is another clip from the 60 Minutes uh, the sixty minutes interview that Nancy Pelosi did. Uh, just a real quick clip. Just listen to her voice. Listen to what she's saying. And um, it's just unbelievable. But she's so filled with, with anger and, 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 and uh, drunk with power. The power of the speaker is to set the agenda. We didn't have a speaker who would bring a gun bill to the floor. We didn't have a speaker who would bring a dreamer's issue to the floor. We do now. And that's a very big difference. The power of the speaker is awesome. Awesome. Bring a gun bill to the floor and dreamers. And what did you get done with that? Nothing and nothing. 100 days in office, nothing and nothing. Sorry, folks. These Democrats are on... uh, Every day, every day, just showing off as absolutely doing nothing. And now let's get into some of the fake news that's out there. This is incredible. Uh, follow at jelly underscore cat. Um, CBS had a little bit of a meltdown over the weekend. And uh, we, we've got some of the uh, MSNBCs and the CNNs, a little bit of a meltdown. And this was put up uh, on social media. Check this out. A few years ago, ideas that we talked about were thought to be fringe ideas, radical ideas, extremist ideas. Those ideas are now mainstream. I I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless c- What's Uncle Tom but for white women who disappoint other white women? One way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy, so please bring on the recession. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. That's the left, 2018, unhinged. We're seeing the violence escalate on the left, the rhetoric. Um, Ilhan Omar, absolutely, extremely violent. And this is the one for CNN. Uh, This was posted up at CNN. And apparently they thought that, or CBS, CBS posted this up. And this was supposed to be uh, a, a trailer for a new show coming up. I guess they thought this was funny or thought this was acceptable. But CBS posted this up on social media and immediately deleted it. However, oh man, we got that downloaded. You can't get away from us. You cannot get away. You can't gaslight us. You can't get away from us. We got the clip. This is a clip of a black man speaking, and he's going to refer to somebody named Richard Spencer. The backstory of Richard Spencer was he is a neo-Nazi, and his ideologies align with the Democrat Party. Dinesh D'Souza in his movie uh, absolutely showed it and destroyed him one-on-one. Is it all right to hit a Nazi unprovoked? I was always taught to never throw the first punch, never instigate, defend, but don't attack. But then I saw a video of the white nationalist Richard Spencer being punched in the face during an interview, and I realized Spencer was in a pressed suit. 
wearing a tie, being interviewed like his opinion mattered, like he should be considered part of the conversation, like neo-Nazism was just one political point of view. And then I realized there's no better way to show some speech is not equal. Some speech requires a more visceral response. It's like Overton's window. That's the term from which ideas are tolerated in public discourse. Well, Overton's window doesn't mean shit unless it comes with some enforcement. So yeah, this is enforcement. It's time to punch a few Nazis. <laughs> CBS All Access, All Access, hashtag join the fight. CBS All Access, hashtag join the fight. If you got CBS All Access, you need to cancel that subscription right now. We've got a writer that's in a group with us. Uh, she, uh, I showed her that clip and she said she had CBS All Access. She said immediately after seeing that clip, she immediately canceled her CBS All Access. Uh, apparently that's a TV show. Hashtag join the fight. Yeah. Yeah, I see where the anger is at. The anger is not on our side. And again, Donald Trump tweeting out to us in real life, uh, in real time, exposing the fake news, exposing the lies, exposing the left. And he tweeted this out. Say it's wrong? Prove it wrong. Donald Trump tweeted out earlier today, Chinese telecom giant Huawei hires former Obama cybersecurity official as a lobbyist. This is not good or acceptable at Fox News at Steve Hiltonix. The Chinese telecom Chinese telecom giant which we'll be talking about later on this week has to do with the 5G uh, expansion. That's not good either. This giant, if you're a giant in China, you're tied to the government. You've got government dealings. Uh, you're beholden to the government. That's because that's the way that, that system is set up, the communist, socialist type system. Obama's, Obama's cyber security official, who knows America's most coveted secrets when it comes to technology, now getting paid for by this Chinese government, uh, gov- government entity, if you will, this, this business. So it's just, it's too much. It's too much. But let, let's lighten it up when we close this out. Let's let's, let's have a couple of light. Let's get, let's get a little light on here, man. Whew. I didn't even have time to get into the uh, illegal immigration. And thank goodness we don't need none of that. It, it is real, and we'll keep talking about it, and we're still working with it. Check this out real quick. And this is something that uh, when my cousin was here last week, we were talking, we are going back and forth. Uh, at Lady Red Wave, hashtag Matt Getz introduces resolution pencil act to remove hashtag Schiff from House Intel Committee. P-E-N-C-I-L stands for preventing extreme negligence with classified Information, licenses, resolution. <laughs> so we got Matt Getz jumping into the fray. Folks, they have no sense of humor on the left. The left can't meme. They can't take a joke. They, they're always, they're too serious and they're too angry. And we're going to keep doing this over and over again. This is the new politics. If you don't like the way the politics is run nowadays, I'm sorry. The, the, the ways of yesteryear, the bygone. It's a bygone era. This is today's politics. This is today's news outlet. Right here, New Right Network tonight, smith.tv. And Greg Gutfeld, Greg Gutfeld, uh, tweeted out by at KBQ225, Greg Gutfeld, uh, juxtapose Obama, Trump. Showing up, he reminds you of how much fun we're having now. I mean, cut, compare this. Uh, among progressives in the United States, maybe it's true here as well, um, is a certain kind of rigidity. <laughs> compare that to this. Little pencil neck <laughs> Adam Schiff, crooked <laughs> Hillary Clinton, not president, and they're not, right? Ridiculous bull. <laughs> Then you see this guy, like this little schlepper. China! 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 China. China. Pocahontas. Oh, darling, you're so brilliant. <laughs> darling, I want to watch television. I'm sorry. The wind isn't blowing. There could still have been some 
Russia colors. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. <laughs> That is Donald Trump cracking on the left, cracking on the insanity that is the, the socialist. The socialists are so serious because they're so desperate to get their power back. Uh, uh, they're relenting. They will not give up until they get it back. And the only way to, uh, to, to beat them at their own game is to fight them in the realm of ide- ideologies. And I'm telling you right now, Donald Trump... Doing things that nobody, it's going to be hundreds of years. This may never happen. There will be never be an Abraham Lincoln, never be a George Washington, and never again will there ever be a Donald John Trump. So that, that tip to America, God bless America. God bless Donald Trump. Wake up every morning, say your prayers, pinch yourself and realize, yes, Donald Trump is still president. We're pushing for 2020, and we want this to be a bigger landslide. We want this to be an all-out landslide like never seen before because it, we have to prove a point to the left, to the media, to all of them, to the globe, to the world, to everyone. We don't want your invasion. We don't want globalism. You guys stay out. We'll stay in. With unfathomable power. What kind of power? Unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Without fathom. Wow. New Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network. Home of the New Right Movement.